Hello friends! Today I wanted to talk about chunky books. I love chunky books. I love the immersion, the depth that you really get in chunky books. I prefer chunky books. And I know I'm not alone, especially for all my fantasy and sci-fi lovers out there, where a large majority of these types of books, adult fantasy and adult sci-fi, by the way, uh, are chunky. In order to build a fantasy world or a futuristic world, you really need to invest time in the details. That is why I have chosen five of the chunkiest books on my TBR shelves to attempt to read this year. I have two science fictions here and a literary fiction and two fantasy books that I hope to get to before 2024 is over. So what I think that I will probably do is attempt to read one each month, maybe in July, August, September, October, and November. And uh, these are not the only chunky books that I have, but these were the ones that were the chunkiest. Let's just get into it. The first one I have is Anatheum by Neil Stevenson. This book is almost a thousand pages. Yeah, 997 pages, although the the width of the pages is not super thick but from what i understand this book is pretty dense and can be a little bit slower to get through because there is a lot of information within the pages but that it is really well written and thought-provoking and it is about a group of monks who worship math and science it says for 10 years fra Arisa. Erasmus, a young avout, has lived in a cloistered sanctuary for mathematicians, scientists, and philosophers, protected from the corrupting influences of the outside world. But before the week is out, both existence, the existence he abandoned and the one he embraced will stand poised on the brink of cataclysmic change. And Erasmus will become a major player in a drama that will determine the future of his world as he follows his destiny to the most inhospitable corners of the planet and beyond. I've had this book on my shelf for many years and I don't know why I've always put it off. I think that I had read at one point that it was very confusing and hard to get through and so I kind of avoided it, but I did take a look at Google, uh, not Google, at Goodreads, and I did read very many good reviews. I think it has like a four and a half star. The time has come to delve into this bad boy. The next one I have is, oh, there's a bookmark in it, okay. Is The Fall of Giants by Ken Follett. This is book one of the Century Trilogy, and I believe that it is a World War II drama. Drama. A World War II historical fiction. <laughs> uh, let's see. This book is also 985 pages. It says, a 13-year-old Welsh boy enters a man's world in, a in the mining pits. An American law student rejected in love finds a surprising new career in Woodrow Wilson's White House. A housekeeper for the aristocratic Fitzherberts takes a fateful step above her station, while Lady Maud Fitzherbert herself crosses deep into forbidden territory when she falls in love with a German spy. And two orphaned Russian brothers embark on a radically on radically different paths when their plans to immigrate to America falls afoul of war, conscription, and revolution. From the dirt and danger of a coal mine to the glittering chandeliers of a palace, from the corridors of power to the bedrooms of the mighty, Fall of Giants takes us into the inextricably entangled fates of five families and into a century that we thought we knew, but that now we'll never see the same again. I love Kun Follett's writing. I read Pillars of the Earth many years ago, and I actually loved it so, so much. I do have book two in that series, and that may be another one that I attempt to read at some point. Okay, the next one is another sci-fi, and that is Paradise One, 
by David Wellington. This chunky boy is 677 pages long and it is about Paradise One, Earth's first deep space colony. For thousands of people, it was an opportunity for a new life until it went dark. No communication has been received from the colony for months, and it falls to Firewatch Inspector Alexandra Petrova and the crew of the Artemis to investigate. What they find is more horrifying than anything they could have imagined. This sounds amazing to me. I know that it has received some mixed reviews. I think it has a four star on good reason. I'm not really quite sure about that. But I think that the premise sounds very intriguing and just the type of thing that I like to read in sci-fi. Kind of a blend of futuristic science type stuff as well as a little bit of horror thriller. So I have high hopes for this one. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> The next two actually are both editions that I received from The Broken Binding. The first one is China Mieville's Perdido Street Station. I mean, this book is so gorgeous. And it is 867 pages long. And it is about the metropolis of Krubuzen that sprawls the center of the world. Humans and mutants and arcane races brood in the gloom beneath its chimneys where the river is sluggish with unnatural affluent and factories and foundries pound into the night. For more than a thousand years, the parliament and its brutal militia have ruled here over a vast economy of workers and artists, spies and soldiers, magicians, junkies, and whores. Now a stranger has arrived with a pocket full of gold and an impossible demand and inadvertently, clumsily, something unthinkable is released. As the city becomes gripped by an alien terror, the fate of millions lies with a clutch of renegades and outcasts on the run from lawmakers and crime lords alike. The urban nightscape becomes a hunting ground. Battles rage in the shadows of uncanny architecture, and a reckoning is due at the city's heart under the vast chaotic vaults of Perdido Street Station. I've heard really good things about this one as well, so I'm definitely excited to pick that one up. The next one has got to be one of the most beautiful books on my shelves at this point, um, and that is A Time of Dragons by Philip Cantrell. This book is 734 pages. This one says, once there were heroes, brave men and women who showed their quality to be above the rest, those whose deeds earned them the heart of a dragon, whose courage and strength resonated with the unborn, who in their eggs can wait thousands of years for a warrior worth them. These heroes rose up on young battlefields and defended the weak and oppressed across all of Eridor. They did so because they were inspired. They had only to look up and see. Dragon riders. But there are no more heroes. War with the Andarans like nothing the riders nor the armies of Eridor have ever faced. In the place of heroes, there are only soldiers now, fodder for the machine of war. The time of twilight is set to the crowning era of the dark when the light is losing its grip. There are those who have been waiting, biding their time in the shadows, while the heroes of Verda die out. They worship among something ancient, something forgotten by myth and legend, something evil. It falls on a few to keep back that darkness, a few who must rise without inspiration and prove themselves worthy. I adore dragons in fantasy, as I'm sure many fantasy lovers do. So those are the five. And if I get through all of those before the end of the year, I have another one that I've been meaning to get to for a while that I'm just going to briefly mention because it is well known and well loved and that is Lonesome Dove. So if I make it through these five, then Lonesome Dove will be up in December. If you have read any of these, I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. If not, if any of these interest you and you would be interested in doing a buddy read, because I would love to chat about these as I make my way through them, please let me know, because I am totally down for that. That's gonna do it. Those are the five. Let's talk about them. Tell me what you thought. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. <laughs>